Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, and I'd like to welcome you to this video, especially if you're someone who wants to get into a CNC business and really doesn't know how to start, or if you're someone who is in business and you're struggling with it and you don't know what to do. Well, this video and this series of videos will help you out tremendously so long as you follow these steps. What you're gonna be watching here is the fifth of a series of videos of me mentoring a guy named Mark who was in the nine to five type of life and didn't want to do that anymore. Wanted to do something more creative for himself. And so he ventured into the CNC world, bought a CNC router, uh, specifically a long mill, which I happen to have and endorse. And when he got it set up, he had really no idea what he was going to do or how he was going to make this work. Eventually he'd come across the videos that I create and contacted me and asked me for guidance because the videos I create for you not only teach you about the design from the beginning of projects, how to run the control software, how to run your CNC router, how to work with router bits, miscellaneous stuff like that, but also about how to start a business. I've started three businesses in my time. I've worked under million, millionaire mentors. My current mentor is an eight-figure millionaire. He has started nine different businesses. And so from that, you know, you, you just get the higher and higher business acumen. And I've reached a point where my mentor said, it's time for you to mentor other people, Garrett. And it just so happens that CNC mentoring is really the, the place that I feel really alive at. Because I can teach you how to bring that, that creative energy out from within you and earn an income off of it. So what inevitably happened when Mark asked me to mentor him, I said yes under the condition that we would record it and make it available to you as someone who wants to get to business. He said, okay, and so this is the fifth of those mentoring sessions. Now, if you have not watched episodes one, two, three, or four, you will not understand why Mark has gotten to the place he's gotten to now. Mark has almost hit his first goal, but you have to understand how he gets there, and it all starts with building the foundations. So if you have not watched any other mentoring sessions, down in the description are links to all the other previous mentoring sessions. You have to start at number one. Otherwise, none of this stuff will make sense to you as to why we're talking about what we're talking about in this video. This series of mentoring is here to help you build a successful business. So if you really wanna do that, I ask that you start at that first mentoring session. So go watch that and if you've seen them all, we're gonna dive right into Mark's mentoring session. You'll be surprised at where he's at and some of the mind shifts that he's gone through since the beginning. So let's get into Mark's mentoring session. Hey, Mark. Hey, Garrett, how you doing? All right, how are you? Good, easy, okay. Good. So we are in session number five, and it's it's been a an extra week. Uh, you've been quite busy. In, I have. You know, right. You've been telling me in the emails and what have you. So, yeah, sorry about uh, the back and forth there. Um, last week was a bit of a bit of an interesting week, and I think I mentioned to you in one of the emails uh, we have to move house. So um, it's been uh, it's been a whirlwind of uh, of activity as I've started to reorganize the garage. Now we've got to move. So right, anyway, right. it's all, it's all good. I can have a, I have a way better shop and a way better uh, place to work, and um, yeah. All right, and uh, naturally, a reminder: uh, you know, this is being recorded, and we're going to be posting this on YouTube and on the IDC Woodcraft channel. So, people are definitely following your mentoring session, and um, um, I'm getting a lot of comments and uh, emails regarding that. So, you know, it, uh, it's, you, it's quite interesting. There's been some people that have, have reached out to me privately, and are asking questions, um, giving suggestions. And, and I've connected with a couple of guys uh, and one lady um, personally. Um, so we're chatting kind of on a somewhat uh, on and off basis on Instagram. So that's kind of cool. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's neat. Um, I'm not really a, an online chatter kind of person. I, I tend not to do that stuff, but uh, yeah, there's uh, some people have been following the um, Instagram channel and uh, the, uh, the Facebook channel. I haven't put anything up on my Facebook thing, but uh, there's some people that are chatting me over there, so it's kind of cool. Oh, good. So, so you're this this whole journey of yours is inspiring people. You know, it, it has, and it's also from an accountability perspective on my side. It's um, 
you know, I see, I see the little bits, I see the struggles and things, and then I read the comments and thank everyone for the, for the words of encouragement. I, I'm really, uh, you know, when I started this whole thing out, even being public online, I was a little hesitant. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, it's it, the encouragement's great. So thank you, everyone. I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good. You know, accountability is good, <laughs> especially when you have uh, quite a few people out there watching you, right? And 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 you, and, and you know that they're they're kind of uh, counting on your um, ability to overcome the challenges, to see that it's possible. There's there's nothing that really holds you back, as long as you're willing to push through it. You got to push through it. You got you got to. That's the thing, Garrett. You got to push through it. You got to put in the time and. I think for me at least, I notice that um, when I'm when I'm resisting or when I'm uncertain about things, that's when I know that uh, I you know I gotta kind of go back to the why. I've got to go back to what am I doing this for, and then kind of look at I don't want that old life. I want this life, and I'm enjoying it. And uh, you know I'll figure something out or I'll get through it. So mm -hmm. okay, all right. So let let's kind of start this one off with uh, we're five weeks in. You've seen some success and what have you. Uh, and and you we're talking about the accountability and people are watching you why don't you share a little bit about some of the challenges that you, your personal challenges emotional challenges that you've had to overcome or to push through because that that others may feel the same kind of thing that you maybe uh just by virtue of your experience and journey will help them yeah so a, a big one a big one that i'm struggling with still and i um, is is a there's I've been reading up about this idea of an imposter syndrome, right? Um, that I'm not good enough to do this. You know, I'm I'm new into the I'm new into the space, and um, you know, I'm not competing, but I'm alongside people who have been doing this stuff for for ten and fifteen years. Um, and and one of the things I've found actually is in going out it was the last. Uh, show that I did at last market and then uh, last weekend going out and surveying a couple other markets to potentially go to um, the support in the community has been fantastic and people are um, you know people are reaching out and they're like oh no you're, you know you're doing good you're doing great um, so I'm I'm setting expectations I think too high for myself and um, and then I'm trying to do everything all at once so that's that's kind of a, a big thing um, the in the past, a lot of the projects and freelance work that I've done, I've always been a team. Um, there's been me and the clients. Um, <clears throat> I don't have that. It's me and me. <laughs> it's me in the mirror. And uh, so there's days where it's a bit of a struggle and I'm finding myself, you know, kind of um, not going into the shop. Uh, I'm finding myself getting hung up on, a, a, you know, creating a file, a car file, and trying to make it perfect. And then, you know, things like that. So. Uh, or I started getting into some product development R and D concept of of making products for my my main wholesale client, and that's fun. That's 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 easy. I can just sit at the computer, following up and making phone calls and reaching out and doing those things. They're they're still a bit of a an obstacle for me and a, a, a challenge. But uh, I I know that I, I know that I'm when I do that. The phone rings when I do that. People put in orders when I do that. You know things move forward. So I just you know I have to do it. And I'm I'm kind of doing it at the beginning of the day. Uh, somebody shared a book with me called um, uh, How to Eat Your Frog, and it's the frog is this gross, disgusting thing. So just do it first thing in the day, and then the rest of the day is kind of uphill from there. So I'm kind of doing that, and I'm making sure that on a weekly basis I'm looking at the two or three things I need to do for the week, so that for the week then those are accomplished then if nothing else happens if everything breaks at least i've done those things so um shifting my pattern in that um so that's kind of been a big thing and then the other the other a uh, big obstacle that i've been uh working to overcome is in the area of kind of how i, how I run my day um so in the past i i sometimes if i had a rough day i'd work at night um because it was all computer work I can't run the shop at night because my neighbors aren't happy about that. So uh, making sure that I'm a little bit more scheduled and building out time to make inventory for shows, building out time to you know, learn a new skill, um, refine something. So 
It's each day it's build something that's going to make money. And Katie had a great suggestion, which was, you know, okay, either make something or sell something so that you're generating 350 bucks a day. And if you're doing that five days a week, that's, that's a good number. So each day I'm, I'm doing that. Sometimes I'll do four hours to make that. And then the next day I won't, but that's kind of where I'm going towards is two to three hours so that I make something that I can sell for 350 bucks. Um, so that's, that's kind of where that's gone. The, the other thing that I, I'm struggling with is telling people what I do. Um, so we have to move house. I think I mentioned that. And we're working with a realtor, an amazing guy. Um, and Anise has been phenomenal. And then he asked me, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm kind of between, I'm starting this new company. It's a woodworking thing. Oh, that's cool. And then Katie's like, well, no, actually he, he does beautiful cutting boards and engraves them and all that stuff. And she's like, show him a picture, show him a picture. And lo and behold, now I have an order for two boards and he wants me to uh, create an uh, entire program for him. So we, so he can, every time he sells a house, um, he can send off a board. I had talked about that, my plans, but executing it, actually going and talking to somebody was, and, and somebody relative stranger, that was, um, that was a bit of a challenge. So, yeah, those, those little mental games that I'm playing, those are the challenges I'm dealing with right now. Okay. All right. That was a very good rundown. And it actually gave me some notes and things to talk about a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, yep. And, and the first one that caught my attention was you said something about R and D prototyping. What, what is that? Yeah. So, um, so just, just as a quick uh, thing, and I, I wanted to share this because I saw some people privately ask me. So this is, this is what I'm making. So this is a wine barrel stave. You can see it back here. Think about a wine barrel. and They're all kind of around circles. So what I'm simply doing is I'm cutting a hole in this, and then I am lasering on the logo. Right? Can you see that? Yep. Yep. So I make these, and then I, I also then do the inverse of that. Where I make them what I call deluxe. So they look like this, right? Okay. And just by doing that, you can charge a lot more. But this, there's, there's offcuts, right? So there's waste offcuts on there. So I'm trying to figure out what do I do with this chunk of wood? This is, it's a raw format. And just in case anybody wonders, that's the, um, uh, the toasting that they do to burn the barrel to give its flavor. And all that purple, that's the, uh, uh the staining of the red wine so this is the oak barrel french oak barrel insanely hard to cut um but anyway what do i do with these things so i was like they host weddings there so maybe i engrave you know kind of mark air you know table number one and then some stuff i i didn't line it up i'm still kind of dealing with that stuff to line this up center and then i was like oh maybe i could do some epoxy resin and so i just I did this the other day. I just need to sand it down. And then Katie was like, oh, we'll do it this way. And then, you know, kind of have some, um, you know, some wedding bells or whatever and have, a, have their name a lot bigger. So I'm going to be going down tomorrow to the winery to deliver 19, 18 more uh, candle holders. And I'm going to bring down a couple uh, samples of ideas because the wedding planner is going to be there. So I've got what now? Two, three. 50 of these things, 60 of these things, just short little bits. What do I do with them right now? They're garbage, um, but I can do something with them. So how can I, how can I repurpose those? Um, all these things over my head here, these are the wine barrel hoops that come off the wine barrels, right? So what do I do with those? So again, going online and trying to figure out how do I make something with them? Um, so I'm looking at making clocks. And so that's what I mean by, by the R and D. And then and then I have my um, board, my board stands. So what do I do with those things? Your board stands, the cutting board stands. Cutting board stands, yeah. So have you have you designed those? I have, yes, I have. Is there any chance you can pause this? I, I just realized they're they're at my desk. Oh, we'll run and get it. And I'll okay, pause, I'll pause the recording temporarily. We're back. Okay, we're back. Okay, so we're back. Um, so yeah, so I just made it out of some scrap material. And what I was trying to do is, is kind of build this so that it, I could ship it easily. Uh, so it's a bit of a flat pack concept. 
So what I did is I just took a, a piece of um, three or half inch um, MDF, just uh, some scrap I had laying around. And my idea was that once it's in place, it kind of looks like this. It's a little bit of a dovetail concept, right? And so that's the, that's kind of the prototype. And then when I cut it out of a piece of wood, I designed it so that it's all in one piece. So I can, I, if I needed to, I could ship it like that in one thing. So now it's just getting all the dimensions and everything tighter. Um, but that's basically the idea of how that will, will come out. And then I can ship it, they can assemble it with a friction fit. Oops. And then the weight of the board will hold it, will hold it down. So that's kind of still loosey goosey. But anyway, that's the that's the idea. I showed it to um, two of my neighbors that uh, have boards that I've, I've made for them. Uh, they loved the idea, they thought it was great. And I'm using it right now functionally inside my kitchen just to make sure that it's holding up the largest board that I have right now. So, uh, and it's been working great. So. Okay, all right, very cool. Yeah, that's that. All right. And then what I'll do is I'll make them out of um, the the cherry, the walnut, and the maple. So. Okay. So there'll be those will be the three options. I was thinking about making them all fancy all that stuff, but for what they're gonna what the price point can be for these, I don't think that it makes sense to invest the time into making them all fancy with multicolored um, wood and things. So gotcha. Okay. <laughs> all right. So then so we got orange the prototypes. So okay, so those are the wine stage. You've already been doing that a little bit. And so that's just a, an accessory or an extension of what you're already doing with that. And that's for the um <clears throat> winery that you're that you're kind of helping right now. Yeah, and then and then this is another example, right? So just a wine glass holder, and then um it's been logoed, right? So logoing logoing that up and um and making these for these guys, right? So this will sell for 45 bucks and it's scrap wood right now. So okay. what can you do with it? And then oh, we're that, also that, that sits on top of a bottle. Is that correct? Yeah, so this would sit on top of the bottle and then you'd have a wine glass, uh, two wine glasses there. Okay. So um, and then then I've got the tops of the barrels too. So those are the things that um, you know, and again, these are exclusively going to the vineyard, so they they won't be part of my um, my branding, but you know, the wholesale side of the business pays, you know, it's basically covered half my 55, uh, 5,500 goal target. So, okay. um, and it's consistent, it's predictable, and I only have to deal with one guy. And um, there you go. Simple. Okay. Well, uh, all right, let's get on to, I'm going to readdress this question first of all later. What do I do? And how to come up with a, a, an elevator line for that. We, we have to come up with something with that uh, because I, I've run into the same problem too. It's, it's, how do you explain this? Story? Well, I run this machine that cuts wood and blah, blah, blah. And that's not it. It's, you want something that's going to catch your attention. I think we've talked about this before. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to this. Okay. I was, so, I think, so you know, what it was is I was caught unprepared and I hadn't practiced it. I think okay. once I get going, it'll be a little more fluid. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was, I was a little bit um, bashful to speak about what I do. Okay. Yep. Yep. That bashfulness. That's interesting. And that's worth talking about right now. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of people, well, I know a lot of people and I've been guilty of it myself too. When somebody gives you compliment, right? Uh, you'll understand this in a second. Someone gives you a compliment about a project. You say, oh yeah, yeah. But uh, this part could be that a little bit better, blah, blah, blah. You know, where there are one more critic. And what we what we end up doing is that's that's a reflection of our own lack of confidence when we're telling when somebody gives us a compliment and then they and then we downgrade the compliment uh, yeah by uh, saying something to that effect of yeah it's okay you know it's it's we have to learn and you have to learn with this is to just accept that comment. So this is what I do. I make beautiful uh, carving boards for for women who love to reward themselves, whatever, however we come up with something. And just you, you learn to say it with conviction. Just like you said, you haven't practiced it. You have to get to that point of having faith in, in, in what you do and starting to build that in your mind without um, to a point of, okay, this is what I do. Yep. Right. 
uh, I, uh, I teach people CNC. Uh, even I have to refine mine, right? But uh, and, and actually, that's going up my to-do list right now because that, that is really, really important. Um, Glad I can help you. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, so that, that's that's a that's a really good point. So when it comes back to that, when when you're doing the elevator speech. We take a little bit, take a little bit of time to develop something that catches attention, but makes them ask more questions. We did talk about this before. So, one of my mentors, she was a uh, Wall Street um, investment banker, had her own business, and her elevator speech. When somebody asked her what she did, she says, "I make rich people richer." Right? That's the kind of. Sense. What really? Okay, it's so so. If you can get something that catches that kind of attention and makes people go, hmm, then that's that's really good. So we'll chew on that one. Um, the clocks. I just want to make sure. I'm not sure you're in the space of making clocks yet. This is just an idea you have on the side of your mind right now, or what? What is your thought on that? Because I it just was, want to make sure was, we're not going too far out of our. Yeah. So it was a request by the winery to um to make a couple clocks okay so it was it was hey what are you doing with the hoops uh do you think you make some clocks and i said yeah sure absolutely because i because the way the way i'm looking at it right now is and 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 please correct me if, if you see something else but um i'm already doing one thing i've got the logo down I've, I've nurtured that whole thing i've got a working relationship with them um their their head retail person and their marketing person i've been meeting with and in, in fact i'll be meeting with them again tomorrow um so i'm kind of getting in there and becoming you know slowly becoming their go-to person for hey can you do this hey can you do this yeah so it what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to kind of build that up so that becomes a solid chunk of my uh, monthly revenue. And it's, yep. it's okay. No, I, I won't challenge that at all because there is a growing uh, fixed, uh, almost guaranteed source of revenue that you're generating yeah. now. So that, and in a way you, you, you know, we've been dealing with the cutting boards. You can flip flop your, your avatar a bit if the winery seems to be pulling more of your your creative stuff then the cutting boards obviously go with the caliber of people that like to drink wine and so that could be kind of a back-end deal as well as your your side thing you know just uh, the balance of the two is, is really important but when it comes to push comes to shove if you're getting a guaranteed request from a guaranteed source that you're selling stuff to already like with the wine staves then yeah by all means go after it and this is one of the things about business uh, that sometimes our directions that we go in this is more of a general statement blanket statement for people who are watching this mentoring is when we start on something we define our niche and we're going after it and that niche as, as you start to develop the niche will start to morph into different things and new opportunities will come to you and 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 then you have to refine yourself is this opportunity worth it or, or is this one the one i want to stay on and like uh, mark is experiencing now do you have a guaranteed source of revenue coming in from the side? And that's, that's an important balance because the opportunity that Mark has here, I think he already knows it, but I'm going to tell you is that by doing this, he is going to make a lot more connections with people who spend money, uh, wine drinkers, what have you. And he may get noticed by other wine wineries. That, that make this kind of stuff. And so he may need to reinvent his brand from the Mark, the, the, the carving or cutting board guy to Mark, the, the wine, the winery, uh, right. elegant supply stuff. And, and the carving boards can come in just behind that. And so that may be a direction you may end up going in. Uh, actually, I'm impressed. I like it. Good. Thank you. Yep, and, and and appropriate thinking on that part, on your part. Um, okay, so all right, I think we've kind of covered that stuff. I want to just go all the way back to the beginning when you're talking about what you're feeling. At first, it was the imposter syndrome. I think this taps into that lack of confidence that we were just talking about before. Okay, and the imposter syndrome that I I want you to tell me if I'm correct. But it's so we're stepping into this new craft of CNC stuff and the lack of confidence 
you want to promote yourself. However, the lack of confidence because the lack of experience of getting into it creates that sense of, I can't really say I'm a woodworking CNC or, you know, making these amazing whatever projects when I don't have the confidence. And that creates the, the imposter, the imposter effect of I'm just saying I'm, I'm doing something that it, better than what I really am doing or am capable of. Did I right. make sense on that? Yeah, yeah, totally. If, you know, if I could re reiterate in a different yeah. way is that um, I, you know, to, to sell this stuff, I have to tell people what I do, but I actually don't believe that I'm that good at it. So it's, it, it comes into a difficult conversation internally. It's like, Hey, yeah, I make, you know, beautiful things and, you know, signs and CNC stuff and everything. Like, but I don't really do that. Or I'm, I'm there are people that are doing it better than I am. And that's the, that's kind of that, that point where I see stuff and I'm like, nah. I will tell you one thing though. I've stopped watching YouTube videos for the most part. And, um, it's gone down a bit. I'm spending more time making than watching and, um, I'm feeling more confident and I'm not watching other people be super successful. So it's, I think good. it's, uh, I think it's helping my confidence, not watching other people right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, I actually saw a comment, uh, or got an email. I don't remember which and it's just recently, um, today, I believe or yesterday where, uh, someone was actually commenting on that about the, the quality of stuff that people are making and that they, their email alluded to, how can they ever get to that? They're not good enough for that kind of thing. And it's like anything else. There is no competition out there. These people did it long enough to know how to do it. Right. And that's, that's really what it comes down to. So, um, so just out of curiosity, um, cause I'm starting to get lots of emails and things. You must get a ton of emails and a ton of correspondence on all your YouTube videos and all that stuff. How do you manage to be able to communicate with them? <laughs> You know, it's uh, it's actually very taxing on my time. I do get a lot of emails, and uh, probably in this hour that we're talking, I will probably get about fifteen to twenty emails. And I try to, and that's just emails, right? Uh, so in a day's time, I can get see seventy-five to hundred emails, and I really have to pick and choose on those. I try to answer every one, but it does absorb a lot of time, and I'm actually having to rethink how I approach this. Uh, because yeah because it takes away the quality and the quantity of training that i can put out there uh and then there's a lot of youtube comments which i don't mind it's it's i try to respond to every single youtube comment these are people that are uh, learning from from the things so it's just how do i handle it i just do it and um I'm what thinking it, of that Bruce Almighty thing from the video where he's like got all the prayers coming in he's like puts them into email and he's trying to answer like I don't know, a million emails or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, be. sometimes I get caught with my pants down. I won't remember somebody that I've talked to and then I'll, 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 I'll talk to him like it's the first time I've talked to him. And I'm sure. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's just sure. me running the entire show. And, um, there's uh -huh. a lot that goes on in the background with me. Um, I don't know. I mean, if, if you're interested, I can cover a little bit of that just to show where your business will go as you grow. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, the other thing, I'm just looking through my list here. Um, I went and followed up with some people yep. um, who that bought the board and everything. Yep. And that was the other one of my tasks. Um, one of the, one of the women, uh, her comment has been, I haven't used it. It just sits in my kitchen. It's so beautiful. And, um, so I, you know, I kind of was like, it's made to be used, you know, please use it. Um, and then the other thing is I followed up with some people that, uh, didn't purchase, but I had gotten their names. So starting to build a list and ironically from when I saw him at the show till, till now they had an old cutting board family heirloom kind of deal and somehow something happened and somebody must have put it on a hot stove because the back side of it's all charred and now it's all warped and everything so they've asked me to rebuild them a new one uh bigger better that kind of thing so um you know the follow-up definitely is there but i took the time with the guy during uh the uh during the, the marketplace to have a conversation about how they're made and that's that's why he came back to me because he wants he wanted to know that they're made properly so um so that was an interesting little bit of feedback is that the dialogue of how to, how what goes into it to make it and all that stuff um and the type of wood that's being used and so on he was uh that was the re that's the only reason why he called me back so 
that was, um, I think that was a, a good thing. Yeah, so that's another important point that I, that you are starting to, you are practicing. This is, this is what's so important about being in a, in a niche, is you become an export, expert or uh, a perceived expert in that field. If you, and I'm talking to the general, you know, generally, but I've, I've talked to you about this, I'm talking to you too. The whole reason that you want to niche tight and be a specialist in that niche is because if you're doing too much stuff, you can't retain all that kind of specialized knowledge that, that, that you just talked about, where you took the time, you've taken the time to understand some things about, about the wood and how they're made, and, and, and you've got the practical experience. And the more you do it, you, the more you'll learn about the characteristics of each woods and be able to talk, you know, uh, circles around these people where it's just going to impress the heck out of them. And they're going to, this guy knows what he's talking about. So this is why a niche and specialization is so important. That's why I stress don't have a million things on your Etsy store or on your website. If you're going to make flags, make flags and put your put them on your site and be the flag expert. So, yeah, I, I can't stress that enough. But I think that's that paints the picture well as to why being in a niche is so important. So that nichiness and expertise that you're building acquired a customer by virtue of a discussion that wasn't even around yeah. buying the board and it got you some different business and they remember you when you go to walmart if you're a walmart seller and you're making all kinds of things a sign a cat a napkin holder a, a cutting board and on and on and on and and then your customers confused because you're confused you're making too much stuff so okay um did it did i make that point clear enough uh, yeah it's crystal clear for me yeah yeah so what was it that by niching you present yourself uh as, as an expert in the area and you can now be known as that person and in this case here the niching event and the the knowledge that i shared and imparted with the guy um he went oh i know a guy and because this is all he does and so I didn't have 17 other things on my table. Um, and so he knew me as the cutting board guy. Right. And isn't that interesting? Of all things, a cutting board that was important to somebody else uh, yep. because it was an heirloom. We don't even think about that. Yep. So anyway, okay. So let's move on then. Um, all right. Kind of talked about where you're going already. Uh, I wanted to know about this uh, thermometer because you were supposed to make that thermometer last time. You didn't make it. Yep. You just kind of wrote it down. So have you made your thermometer? Where are you at? What kind of sales have you made since we've talked? About I am. I'm not, I'm not a graphic designer, but I have a thermometer. Have, okay. <laughs> the first one looked a little too phallic, so I drew it as a rectangle. <laughs> Still works. So, so uh, it's in increments of 1,000 each block. Um, I, the first one here was from our last session that I sold some stuff and then I had uh, a wholesale order come in and then I sold a couple more boards. So I'm sitting right now at four forty-eight thirty-nine. So I'm about 660 away. Okay. And you have two weeks yet to knock out your goal. A uh, week. A week. Yeah. One week. A week left. Yeah. End of, end of August. That's, that was my target. Mm -hmm. So so are you going to hit it next week? I believe so. Yeah. There's, um, uh, when I go down to, uh, to the winery, I'll mm -hmm. be picking up some more barrels. So that's, that's going to be an order probably somewhere between a thousand to 1200 bucks. Uh, I've got a bunch of leads for realtors in for, for boards. Uh, and there's two people out that are deciding whether they want to buy a board or not. So between all of that, um, I think if any one of those, uh, comes to fruition then i'll hit my target and, and then i'm still out prospecting and talking to people so so i wanted to stop for a minute and say it's kind of interesting that mark has gotten to this financial point with his 5.5k goal and the importance of measuring it that what you measure gets accomplished if you're just trying to chase sales without a goal you won't get to where you want to go or you will struggle a lot to get there so all the foundations that Mark built to get this point are really important. So I just want to make that point that Mark is so close to his goal because all that foundation has been set. All right, let's get back into the mentoring session. 
Okay. And then so the other, the other thing too is it looks like next weekend I'll be going into my first farmers market. Okay. All right. I don't know how the farmers markets work in your area. I got one that comes across the street here every week, and it's not a it's not really a high ticket market. So um, these two these two places are. Okay. Hit them. Yeah. Hit them. Excellent. Yeah, they're all organic. They're all in very. Um, uh, there's the two that I'm specifically looking at are in upscale neighborhoods, um, and the average spends about 150 bucks. Um, so I went in. I actually went in yes. So this is Monday. So I went in uh, Saturday to one and Sunday to the other to go and meet with the, um, the uh, vendor managers, uh, and then I went and I walked around, spoke to a couple of different other vendors. <clears throat> one lady was fantastic. She said she'd been there for 15 years. Um, I had my backpack on, it was a hot day, but I had my backpack on and I had uh, three different styles of boards with me, uh, showed them and they're like, yeah, this would totally sell. Um, and then I actually went up to two chefs and he said, hey, can you make them as, what I mean by two chefs, these are people that are, um, because we're still in COVID, they're still trying to get their business going again. And so these are guys that um, uh, they, they're actually making fresh food at the farmer's market using all the vendor food. And then so they buy it from the vendors and then they sell it as, as your lunch, your brunch or whatever. Um, so I went up and talked to two of the vendors and they've asked if, um, if I can make them some boards. Uh, but proper you know, butcher block, um, you know, nothing fancy, but they want proper butcher block boards uh, that they can use and the ones that they have at the restaurant some health thing, they can't move them back and forth. So they need to have whatever. And they're like, yeah, you know, come up. Cause I bought, you know, uh, something to eat from one of the guys. And anyway, so it struck up a conversation. So I don't know where that's going to go, but uh, I'm supposed to meet them next weekend and see what happens. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, there is a, another, Oh, before we move on, oh, I just wanted to ask you about this thermostat thing. So how does it feel to be drawing that as opposed to keeping track of it on a, computer you know, um yeah i'll be honest with you at first i was like this is crazy like you know it, it's this is 2021 <laughs> like you know i just i'll just put it in a google sheet and, and be done with it um but actually having it so it sits so this sits um right over there right beside my 5500 i want to be successful um and um it, it feels good to reach for it and scratch something off as silly as it sounds. So I've got my black, my Sharpie marker, and when something comes in and I do the invoicing, I come back and I, I scratch it up. So mm -hmm. it's it's somewhat uh, it's somewhat novel and um, it's it's a visual to be able to see what's uh, what's going on. Yeah, there is something to be said about that that that, that don't think people realize. And what that is is uh, so you understand what's happening. When you're typing something out, it's it's very mechanical, methodical, and the, the computer's doing all the work. When you are actually writing, there's there's uh, like background thought, actual conscious effort going into it, and that seeps into your mind and and sets that new standard for that goal because you're physically looking at that paper, you're physically writing on the chart. You're you're by writing on it, you are actively taking part in that money growing. And so it's, it's, there's a little bit of a rewarding thing, but it also implants in the mind that that's where you're going. And it's a, it's a reinforcement. So I always, always uh, endorse handwriting as opposed to sure. trusting the computer. Okay. There's another thing I just wanted to touch on that we talked about last time that where the lady, you were, you were the, at the place, the lady said, you could definitely make stuff and sell it here um, at some other place for less money. And, you know, and her comment was, do you want to make cutting boards? Do you want to make money? Right. It's something along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. And so what, what I, I have a little bit of an issue with that in that, you know, that that opens up the liberty of, okay, well, I'll just start making crap to, to put out there. And, and, and that pulls you out of the niche. Okay. So whatever stuff you make, you can make the stuff at a lower cost, but you got to stay in that niche. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So what, what I, what I did with, with regards to that is I actually ended up finally having a conversation with her. Um, it was a wealth of information we went through and she listed out, I think 22 different um, uh, two and three day market fairs that are all around uh, within an hour drive of here throughout the entire year. 
Um, so she's put me in contact with several of the um, the vendor selection teams and the people to contact and all that. Uh, so I've started going through that process and uh, it's, a, it's an approval process that you have to go through. Um, and so when I was talking to a couple of the uh, a couple of the vendor managers, for lack of a better term, uh, the conversation went something to the effect of what's your average price point? I told them that my boards are, you know, anywhere from 150 to 225. And they're like, do you have anything in the smaller range? And I said, I don't. And, and one guy said, well, you have a CNC machine. Why don't you make signs? And that's, and I, that's when I tried it out. And I'm like, well, that's kind of what I'm working on with my daughter. It's a fun little side project. And he goes, oh, well, if your daughter wants to put her stuff on your booth and you can sell those for 30, 40, 50 bucks, then that's okay too. So that kind of spun off the conversation. And I, the next Next one I had, I actually said, so here's what I do. And then my daughter and I are, are talking about making some signs and here's the price point. And he was like, sure, that's, that sounds great. And then I spoke to two other women. Um, one was more of a food and, and uh, market as well. And she said, as long as the signs are food related and as long as your products are kitchen related, then we would love to have you. So the, what, what I took away from all of that is uh, there needs to be a kind of grab and go, low price point um, uh, element. So I've been looking at uh, the ability to take uh, and quite frankly, buy them at wholesale from a, from a local maker, um, uh, the barbecue scrapers, and then personalize them. Okay. Um, and then there's someone else that uh, does wholesale uh, boards. And so they're the lower end side of it, but they're still quality. I mean, they're, they're hardwood maple, um, they're beautiful boards, they're, they're good quality boards, but you know, I can buy it at $7 for the board. You know, I mean, it's a small cheese board. I can buy uh, a larger 12 inch by 14 inch board, I believe it was for $16. Um, it's all solid maple, it's great. I can personalize it, I can do that kind of stuff and have, have it at a lower price point and then have the custom stuff to offset it. Um, so I don't know about that yet. I wanted to bring that up as part of our conversation. What, what are your thoughts on, on that? Uh, so the idea of wholesaling, that, that's actually good because it, it pulls labor out from you. All you're doing is basically slightly modifying it and, and then passing it through. Uh, right. so, so that's okay. It's still staying in the niche. Uh, the idea of lower lower end cutting boards. So this is where you, you can feel out the different markets that you go to. If you're going to a market that's not willing to spend $175 on a board, but they're willing to spend 100 then by all means have, have that at the ready. And that can give you more, uh, more leverage, I guess, or more cash flow. Um, don't lose focus of your, your premium concept. Okay, because that's yeah. what you're doing. You are building premium cutting boards and 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 the wine stage, right? You're 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 dealing with a premium market, so you want to make sure you don't allow yourself to drift out of that market or too far out of that market. Or, um, oh, I might eke into Walmart or Sears level, whatever. You know, Sears is here, Walmart's here, there's J.C. Penney somewhere yeah. in the middle kind of thing. You, you're higher than those guys. And, and so you want to make sure you, when people are buying from you, that it's very clear that you are the high end guy, you are right. the expert and the specialist. And, um, so the good thing is you've done research with these guys, you dialogued with them and, and you've thought about what you can, what you can bring in. That's going to be the lower cost. It'll, it'll bring you into that. So you, you talked about the, Sophie and signs. So last time we were talking about your daughter and you had the idea you've been thinking about bringing your daughter in and teaching her. And we talked about maybe setting up a different table. And I, I think that is wonderful because there's a story behind it. It's inspirational. And I, I think it's a, it's a good bonding thing. And I think that'll have a huge impact on your sales in a very positive way. There were comments on the video uh, when we talked about that. that really? maybe, yeah, maybe you shouldn't do that. That's going too far out. And I absolutely disagree with that because you are dealing, your avatar has a, has a sense of familyness to them. Yes. Uh, sometimes very strong and you absolutely need to cater to that. So, so 
everybody's got their ideas of what they what you think you should do um but that's why i'm your mentor and they aren't right <laughs> we're, we're working on this there that's why that's why you know before it's like quit looking at all these different youtube videos right it's, it's because you're getting way too much information from way too many different sources with a lot of conflicting information right. and so um okay the, so let's so, start let's, well go ahead no go ahead go ahead I was going to say let's let's talk about Sophie and, and what you've done so far with that. On sure. that what have you talked to her? Uh, yeah, first of all, ahead. first of all, before you do that, for the sake of anybody who's watching this, uh, just readdress the the idea that this has come from. Oh sure. Um, so looking at the um, at the machine behind me, the long mill uh, CNC machine. Um, I mean, it's 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 ripe to make signs, you know, and that's one of the things it does really well. Um, and I haven't gotten into that side of it. I, I started before I got the long mill making, uh, cutting boards and things like that. And then kind of that spun off into it. I was like, oh, well, let's see if I can make a business around a CNC machine. And that's kind of where it went to. Um, so fast forward to today and I'm not making signs. The, the positioning of a luxury uh, high-end um, exotic wood cutting board at a premium price for a premium product does not jive with a table full of kitschy fun signs, La you know, laugh, love, all that kind of stuff. Um, and my daughter and I have talked many times about things that she could do. She's got friends in her class and she's 11 and a half. Uh, she has a friend in her class that actually runs a uh, co online cooking school that was started up during COVID where he's teaching his fellow classmates and kids how to cook at 10, 10 and 11 years old. Um, and she's, you know, so there's, we've had these kind of discussions back and forth about her learning how to make her own money and, and those kind of things. Um, and over the summer, she's started to get into kind of making graphic designs and, and making signs digitally to share amongst her friends and all that stuff. Um, so I kind of approached her and I said, um, Hey, do you want to do something together? And a little bit of backstory back when, uh, she was five, six, seven, and we'd road trip, we'd always have those little Mandarin oranges. And she came up with this, um, idea that they look like little phones. And she's like, daddy, answer the phone. And I'm like, who am I answering for? And she's like, daddy, daughter bakery, and we're going to make cupcakes. And so for three years, every time we went on a road trip, we made this, this story up to pass time. And it was, it was called D&D &D Bakery. So um, she came up with the name D&D &D Sign Co. And so she, she likes the idea. Um, she doesn't want to run the machine, but she wants to come up with designs and, and make those. And she likes the idea of making them on the computer. So, um, so that's that. And then she, wa she wants to cater to... Uh, kids her age and parents of kids her age. Uh, and then this weekend she's coming over and we're going to sit down and go through a little bit more of an avatar conversation. Um, so in speaking with the woman who's given me all these uh, introductions to all of these different trade shows and marketplace shows, uh, as well as the uh, couple different, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, food, food market, uh, farmer's marketplaces I've gone to, uh, the interesting thing that's kind of come of that is they have all said, we would love to have your daughter at your table. Um, and we'd love to be able to support her and what she's doing. And, um, you know, there's a few women there that like to mentor young girls. So maybe there's an opportunity for her to participate in that kind of stuff. So it's spun off into its whole thing. Um, she's, she's 11 and a half. It's summertime. She's, not as focused as maybe she could be, but that's okay. Um, she's she's got an interest in. She's coming up with ideas and names, and she wants to she wants to take you know all of her friends' names and put them in scrolls and and see if we could uh, you know sell them to their parents as gifts for their their uh, for their daughters. So she's starting to get it kind of into that idea, um, and she's coming up with ideas of of catchphrases and and things like that. So we'll um, we'll see what we can do, and we've we've designed kind of a okay here's here's how it's going to work. Let's see you sell the, the sign for $10. I'm not saying that's the price, but just an example. I said, you know, let's say $4 of that is material and shop and paint and all that stuff. What do we do with the 6% or $6 left? And she's like, okay, well, you know, we split it even 
And then some goes towards um, savings and some I get to spend right now. And I was like, perfect. So she kind of gets the idea of leveraging team, leveraging that stuff. So we'll see where it goes. Um, and I said, one of the deals is that she's got to paint a bunch of stuff. She's got to help out with one show, one, uh, one vendor market uh, every two weeks. Uh, and, um, and during school, she doesn't have to do a lot of uh, the other stuff. But when she's on weekends and breaks, then uh, she'll help out. And when she's with me, we'll, we'll spend some time each weekend uh, uh, working on the business. So. Okay. All right. Well, well, good. So that's going in a good direction then. So you, you're actually going to pass so. on the stuff to her or that, uh, do the avatar talk. Uh, one thing I'd just like to kind of, uh, D&D Signco sounds very corporate, right? Okay. Uh, D&D doesn't express. Like you have artisan woodcraft, right? So, right. There, so there's a sense behind that, uh, artisan. So the D&D &D is, uh, to me, is dry. It's not going to give me that emotional, that emotional hmm, kind of thing. So okay. you may want to talk about daddy, daughter, Sanko, right? Okay. It's something like that. So just uh, something to think about and maybe talk to her a little bit about to sure. get a little more. Um, maybe talk about the avatar first. Who knows? Yeah, we'll talk about that this weekend when yep. she's over, so for sure. Okay. Um, and if she's at a show with you, by yep. all means, have two signs, daddy, daughter, yep. hanging over each each table. You know, all this is so, so, so inspirational. And people are going to come up, they're going to start asking you, what, really? Yeah, they're going to be so inspired, and they will they will buy because they're inspired. All right, so... Uh, What's the first show you guys are going to do it together? Do you know? I don't know yet. Um, I'm trying in for this farmer's market um, on Saturday. Uh, so um, she'll, if I get in, then she'll come down for that. We won't have anything built for it, but she'll come down and hang out and help out. And then uh, ideally the weekend after Labor Day, mm -hmm. uh, that'll be the first, um, that weekend will be the first weekend that we do something. Okay. So here's an idea with the sign. Um, I, I, I strongly, strongly encourage you to do that. The daddy daughter signs, mm -hmm. have, have her write them, transcribe her, her bitmap trace. Oh, sure. Handwriting, and then make the two signs. Very cool. So she, so you mean for, you mean for our display signs? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I like that. Yep. Yep. That way, yeah. I, I think that's, that's yep. Okay. All right. So, we're really in. Uh, you're really in a good direction. So you've got what five hundred fifty dollars to make, six hundred fifty dollars to make in in a week. Six fifty. Yeah. Six fifty. Yeah. And um, so, how how are you feeling now overall with your progress? Do you, are you feeling overwhelmed with the the, the nichiness is another the, the other thing is getting the overwhelmed. Too many things getting into the fire. And it is, uh, yeah. yeah. So I just want to check check you on that and see where you're at with that. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm definitely looking because because the the flow isn't there. So you know, it's like, okay, what else can I make to sell something? Because that gets me over my edge, or over that you know the goal. Um, but it's not within the niche. So I'm I'm really trying to maintain clarity on that. Um, I had somebody ask me to build them, um, uh, basically a, a nightstand, and I'm like, don't do that. And I can refer you to somebody who does that, but I don't do that. Um, would I like to do that? Hell yeah, I think that'd be fun. I've never done something like that before and it's an opportunity to learn, but it's not what I do right now. And I don't see myself doing that in the foreseeable future, maybe as a fun project for myself and the hobby side of it, but not for the business. Um, and then the other, the other part of it is, is the, the, the consistency. That's the other thing I'm struggling with right now is just being consistent and um, and shifting over to a different type of business. Like I, I've spent 20 years sitting at a computer. So every morning I get up, flip on a computer, check my email and then do a bunch of computer work and then have a bunch of meetings and then do more computer work and then check my emails and then sign off mm -hmm. and then spend the rest of the day checking my, uh, my, my phone. Um, this is a completely different business. And so I'm having to create new process. I'm finding, I'm trying to figure uh, efficiencies in the shop. So how, how can I have that thing running while I'm sanding, while I'm cutting and, you know, while something's drying and it's causing, it's forcing a layout change in the shop um, just to be more efficient. Um, and then I'm trying to make sure that I stay on top of communication and emails. 
Uh, so I'm starting to kind of work on a, I get up at 6.30, I do my emails, uh, correspondence and any computer work I need to do. Then I come out to the shop, start making noise at nine o'clock and then have lunch with Katie and then go back out, make noise. And then once that's kind of done, then I, uh, once people start coming home from work, then I go back into uh, kind of computer mode and, um, you know, starting to put together the website and some of the other social media stuff. I'm starting to do that as well. Okay. So that, that's a whole new, it's a whole new experience for me that this this workflow and, and how my day works and the idea that I get to work weekends at events and um, things like that. It's like, okay, I guess I'm going to be working Saturday mornings uh, at, at farmers markets or something like that, you know, or there's 22 weekend affairs throughout the year. So it looks like I'm going to spend half my year, half my weekends at, at trade shows and events. You know, so it's it's kind of grappling around this change of lifestyle that I did not anticipate, um, but it's you know it's coming. Okay, yep. That that you made a good point. So one of the things about being in a craft, uh, if you were going to present yourself, at the, I'm talking more to the general uh, anybody just watching this. If you want to get into CNC business and you're going to manually go out to shows and craft. Um, festivals things like that weekends is the time to do it your saturdays and sundays are going to change to tuesdays and wednesdays um the thing about becoming an entrepreneur is there is no such thing as a weekend there's no such thing as time off you you set up your, your time that you are going to make sure you spend the important time with the family and the, the rest of the time until your business is up and going you have to focus and and becoming an entrepreneur is about the sacrifice is one of the things that's uh, big that a lot of people struggle with. And it, it is hard to sacrifice the things you want to do. The, the, the benefit to entrepreneurs when they work hard, but they work smart is over the long term, all that hard work will lead to a lot of easiness later on. Whereas the, easiness that a lot of people want now they go to the nine to five they clock out it's friday they get their paycheck they chill out for the weekend that will always lead to challenges or most of the time lead to challenges in life um money's strapped uh, being in debt what have you it's kind of stepping into more of an entrepreneurial space or right now where i'm going with uh what i've learned from my mentors i've right. worked i've worked my ass off over the last 10 months building this business and I'm still going to work my ass off. I've, I, I forego family events for the business uh, because I know in a couple of years, I'll be able to go to family events all I want. I'll right. have business in place and other people doing the stuff that, I, that, that I'm doing right now. So that's the idea uh, is to, for me, is, is that. I uh, just want to... I'm trying to prevent present a message to anybody who wants to get into business is it's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take extra hard work and it's going to be frustrating and feel like you're going to fail. You can't quit. Yeah. You can't, you can't you quit. Know, I'm, I'm also finding, I'm also finding that every once in a while I'm kind of getting in into this. Um, oh, I need to clean the shop. I need to work on the shop and, and it's like, well, no, I need to go out and find places to go and sell my stuff. Because if I've got I've got inventory but nowhere to sell, that's not uh, that's not doing me any good. Mm -hmm. That's good. So that, that was like the machine behind me looks like pile of crap right now. <laughs> it's messy, <laughs> dirty, and there's sawdust and everything all over it. But uh, you know what? That's that's fine because it did its job. Now I got to go and, and get more sales. So. Right, right, and that's a very good point. You know, it's that we we can uh, beat ourselves up on the uh, on the little stuff that doesn't make the money. Yes, yes, yeah. The, the cleanliness of your shop doesn't matter now. You can clean it up later, or you can hire somebody. That's what the income is for. Yeah, right. yeah. Pay some kid fifteen bucks an hour for a couple hours to clean up your garage. Right, and you're you're out getting money. Okay, so I, we're we're in good shape. So what you're going to be doing then is you're going to be talking to Sophie. You got uh. So your focus this this week is. I don't make that six hundred dollars by six fifty by yep. the deadline date. Yep. Okay, that's the. If it requires calling up people, call them up. Yep. You don't have to ask for sales. You call them up and how you doing and whatever. Um, your absolute goal is to hit that six fifty. So you do whatever it takes to get there. Um, 
All right, and you're going to be dealing, dealing with Sophie. You've got your wine staves, so I, th I think you're in pretty good shape at the moment. Well, I think, you know, looking at the goals and looking at where the, the thermometer is, mm -hmm. um, I am pretty darn certain that I'm going to hit the, the 550. So I've, I've kind of given myself a little extra bonus goal of 650 or 6,500. So okay. that's kind of my, uh, can, can I get there? And that would be, um, that would be another uh, wholesale order. And that potentially is um, a realtor that I'm talking to that might want to buy 10 boards. Okay. So I'm working on both of those to, to close. So you're pushing, you got that silent, pushing yourself the extra grand uh, through this next week. Yep. Okay. I like that. I like that. Yep. Okay. So what I'm going to do this week, you've already got your, your pretty much your two things. The one thing I want you to do is, um, have you ever heard of the book, Think and Grow Rich? I have, yep. Okay. I read it the, 25 years ago, but I haven't, it's, it's uh, probably forgot more about it than just the title. Okay, entrepreneurs. It's the entrepreneurs Bible, and it really talks about what it what, what it takes to not only become successful, but to uh, become quite successful in the business. So either get the audio book "Think and Grow Rich" from Napoleon Hill, or um, buy the book if you like to read. I absolutely recommend it for anybody who wants to get into business because it's it starts to paint the picture of what it takes to to achieve your success. Think and Grow Rich. I will put a link down in the description of the video so that people know how to get that. Um, Perfect. Yep. Okay. So really, just two two things. It's uh, dealing with your daughter and making sure you hit this this six fifty and yep. pushing after that extra grand. And then we will talk again next week and see where we're at. And then we're going to start establishing new goals. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate uh, appreciate it, and uh, looking forward to uh, feedback and comments. Uh, I think this. I think this time I might actually respond to some. It's uh, it's one of those things I've been hesitant to do. I, I think this uh, this week I'll start responding. Yeah, well, that that's actually a good thing to have on the list to respond to those things because, uh, yeah, I mean, in in some ways, there's people that are being inspired by what you're, by seeing your success, and they're being inspired to know that they can do it. So maybe by cool. you engaging, it might help out. All right, my friend. Then we will talk yeah. again in a week. All right. Have yourself a great week. We'll, we'll speak then. All right. I'll see you. And there we are. Session number five. If you've gotten something out of this, give me a thumbs up, and I would love to see a comment, some of your aha moments of what you need to do to make changes in your direction so that you, want, so that you can get successful with your CNC business. I look forward to the sixth mentoring session where Marcus actually hit his goal and then we're going to set up new goals because Mark wants to get to that 100k a year mark. So this is exciting and I hope it's inspiring you to just go for it, right? Go after something that you love. The thing that's really interesting is this whole thing morphed into Mark doing a daddy daughter thing. That wouldn't have come to light if we didn't go through this chain of events. So here's what happens when you actually start stepping into the unknown is things start coming to you that otherwise would not have come to you, opportunities and other things. This daddy-daughter thing is going to inspire a lot of people and that is going to amp up his income. All right, again, like I said, thumbs up and a comment. You might want to subscribe to this channel because I teach all kinds of stuff, CNC router, for the beginner all the way to building a business. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. I hope you have a great day, better tomorrow, and happy seeing and seeing.